Here's another video in this series of uh, short exercises in Fusion. Uh, basically, how can we get um, a technical drawing to be translated to uh, Fusion 360 design? I've explained in other videos that this is a really important skill and a good way to get good at sketching, which is the majority of what you do in Fusion. This is uh, probably the last one I'm going to do right now because the temperature is creeping up uh, in my garage. The AC is not on and um, it's just too noisy. So let's see how quickly we can get through this before I pass out. Uh, first thing we do in all of them is choose new component and um, we'll call this one rod support. I'll create a sketch on the front work plane. That's this one. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to click that. It's just this one. And uh, I will just start drawing. Now, again, as always, I want to just look at the numbers. They look like they're probably millimeters. So let's just change to millimeters. Oh, it's already millimeters. Okay. And then let's start making some lines. Now, I know that this one is 13 according to the drawing. So let's just make it about that. Okay. And then start doing the rest. So we've got uh, this part and then we've got the tall bit kind of making an H like thing over there one interesting thing to know is uh, I've been talking about how um, constraints are made automatically sometimes for you so if you noticed it made these two lines on the top horizontal from each other but it doesn't actually make a constraint for you it's just inferencing so it's just giving us uh, help in drawing but it's not actually making constraints there so again like here it looks like it's going to make a constraint that says these two are collinear but that's not actually what's happening so I'm doing a really bad job on purpose and I'm going to go back and add some constraints so that should obviously be vertical that should be horizontal that looks good now uh, some of these should actually be collinear, but that's not what the drawing says. Let's just go by uh, what the drawing says for now. Mm, actually, I guess there are some parts that re require us to say that it's collinear, but let's add some sketch dimensions. So the height here is 13. We said that already. The uh, distance from, from, hold on, undo. D for dimension, the distance from here to here is 113. Uh, okay, that's kind of messed everything up, but that's okay. We'll just nudge it over. The um, Now, it doesn't say necessarily that these are the same uh, on the same plane, but uh, I'm going to make them collinear. I believe that's right here. The height of the whole thing is 64. So the height from here to here, the very top, even though there's an arc up there or an, oops, a curve, uh, let's try and let's try and do a couple things. This one and this one obviously should be collinear. So let's make that happen. And that way, when we change this number, hopefully it won't s screw up the drawing too much. 64. Okay. That's better. And, uh, you know, there is no symmetry line in here, so we can't just rely on uh, drawing half of this and then translating it over to the other side with a mirror. So we're going to just stick with what it shows, and that shows that they are uh, the same height, but they're not necessarily mirrored from left to right. So let's just keep, keep it the way we've got it. Um, let's see. This distance here between here and here should be 13. Distance from the bottom of that H to here should be seven, whoops, 17. And we're getting close to a constrained model. So we're doing okay. This to here should be 25. The distance from here to here is 19. Same here. Again, it says 19 and 19, so that's how we're doing it. We're not assuming that it's symmetrical. We're just going to stick with the dimensions that are here. Uh, that looks like... Okay, so the distance from here to here is 39. And the distance from here to here is 35. Oops. 35... Between here, we've got 25 already. Uh, and the distance from here to here is 
25. So what you can see is happening is that it's basically everything is measured off of here. So 39, another 35, and then there's no dimension here. It's just driven at that point. So if I try to make a dimension, it'll say it's a driven dimension because these other two and the overall dimension require that this gets kind of automatically figured out. So this is it. I think this is the uh, this is the front view. It's just kind of a silhouette of it. And I will hit finish. And again, I'm going to go over to sketches and just rename that and call it the front view. Uh, I will hit F6, a very handy key that zooms it into view. And I like the home view. So I'll click that. I'll click this and hit E and extrude this to 32 negative 32 in this case. Okay, so now there are a couple of things. Uh, obviously, I need to look at this from a couple other views. One is that I need these holes that come down from the top, so that's going to be a separate sketch. And then I need to carve these sort of curved tops to this thing and the holes that are underneath, the concentric to it. So let's try and figure that out first because that's a harder one. Or we'll do the easy one. So uh, let's do the one from the top. Again, I'll hit F6 to kind of zoom in and uh, let's project this body in. So I'll go to create, project, and just click on that body and hit OK. And that way we've got the edges all included in this new sketch. I'll choose to kind of make those notches on the edges there. There's one there and one there. And I will, um, how are those defined? Well, it's 45 degrees. So from here to here, this is 45 degrees. Uh, and obviously we need a distance. So the distance from here to here is 10. Uh, that's it. We've got that one all set. And I assume this one is the same. Hmm. You know, this one doesn't, this one actually doesn't show the, that same information, but I'm going to have to assume. I tried not to assume with anything. It doesn't say they're mirrored. So I really would prefer it if it had the dimensions there or it said they were mirrored. But in this case, I will just say that they must be the same. Okay. I think the heat is starting to affect my computer. And the obviously like this, it should be 45 degrees. Okay, and um, and then obviously we need the the circles. I I'm gonna draw circles. I could make points there and use the uh, hole feature later, but I'm gonna make circles instead. There's a circle here and a circle here. Uh, the distance from here to the back is 13, and the distance from here to here is also 13, it looks like. This says that uh, this does have 11 drill. So 11 meaning 11 millimeters, and uh, there are two holes. Now, I think, um, again, we're just going to have to assume that these two are supposed to be symmetrical, but it does have some dimensions. So. Uh, I'm going to make the distance from here to here 113, no, 87. I'm going to make sure that the diameter here is the same as this one. Now, there are a couple ways I can do that. I can either click this other one uh, so they're the same, or I could use a, an equal constraint later. Uh, I also want to make sure that these two are the same horizontally. So now you can see everything turned black. I think we're all set. I'm just going to move over and extrude these things. Before I do, I'm going to call this top, even though it is really the bottom. I will extrude and I'm just going to hold down the button to get to that profile underneath. I'll hold down shift and just grab these others. That one and that one. I will make sure they go all the way through. And the way we do that is just by choosing all. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. The last thing is to get to the side thing going. And uh, what I'll do is hide these other sketches, make one final sketch on this work plane. And I am again going to just hit P to project and I'm gonna project that body and it'll make things easier for me. And uh, what I need to do here, it looks like is there's a uh, there's an arc on the top, right? So let's see, how does this work? 
looks like there's a 35 millimeter radius uh, arc. Let's do a three point arc that goes, and again, I'll hover to see what it's asking for. It's asking for the starting point. So there's the starting point. Now it says, give me the ending point. There's the ending point. And then here is the top point. And I've let it make a couple of constraints there, I think. Nope, I thought it made a constraint to keep that uh, horizontal uh, in the center there, but it didn't. That's okay. This obviously has to be coincident with that. So let me add that constraint. This one I think has already got that. Uh, these two should be horizontal from each other. I may be making this more difficult. There's a lot of steps here, but uh, the main thing is I need to make sure that this, the diameter of this is, or the radius is 35. So let me just click here. The radius should be 35. Okay, and uh, you know, it says the distance from here to here is 16. Uh, that's automatically figured out, I think, because it's a driven dimension. So there we go. Um, the last thing is the, the, the hole that goes through there. So let's see. Uh, oh, also, by the way, the, the reason why this is able to land on the top here is because it's got this tangent constraint. So that, that's, if yours is lower, then that would be why. Um, so the last thing is making this point, let's, cr or a circle, let's make a circle here, just anywhere. It says that it's a 13 drill. It says the two holes are in line, so that, that's good. And then, uh, the distance from here, well, it should be, it should be horizontal vertical from this. So there we go. And the distance from here to the bottom is 46. Okay, something's not right because it's still showing up blue, ah, the dimensions. So let's hit D and make sure that's a 13 millimeter hole. Okay, so there, I mean, I kind of feel like I stumbled through that a bit. I'm going by the dimensions that are in the drawing. There's probably other ways to do that are much, that are much easier. You can make a circle here instead of an arc. You can use the other arc types, uh, but this, this looks right. Um, I'll hit finish sketch. And I will just extrude those bits, this and this and this, all the way through. Uh, sorry, distance all. Okay, and that's it. I will rename that sketch and hide it. There we go. That looks like the drawing. Uh, again, if you see anything that I missed or uh, anything that's wrong, let me know, but it looks like it's probably right. Um, some other notes that are on here, you know, uh, I think 11 drill, 13 drill, that definitely tells me that it's metric because we wouldn't have those measurements if it were, um, if it were imperial measurements, but uh, also it says the material and it says two required. Uh, the last one we looked at, I didn't mention it, but it said CRS, which is cold rolled steel. So there's more information in these drawings that could be useful, uh, especially if we're actually trying to fabricate these things. But for us, we're really just interested in the dimensions and um, making sure that we get it to, to be the same, same part. Okay, 